What's up guys, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on one of my latest gear acquisitions. This is the Fox Knives Vox Seru in Titanium. I'd like to preface this video by admitting that I am by no means an expert on pocket knives, and I am just your typical gear geek, so much of this video is going to be coming from a layman's perspective. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about this knife. There's actually quite a few iterations of the Seru floating around, and mine is a plain Jane Titanium version. This was done by a sprint run from Urban EDC Supply. Most of my comments should hold true for the various titanium versions they released of this knife though. The base price at the time of my purchase was $239 for this particular model. Every good knife review has a relative size comparison, so I'll show you the Suru up against some of my other knives I have on hand. So here's my Sebenza 21 small. This is sort of the benchmark of production knives. And over here is my Spyderco Dragonfly 2. So, um, the Dragonfly 2 is probably a more appropriate size comparison, but I do think that the Sabenza is comparable as a mid-tech knife. These also happen to be the only knives I have on hand at my dorm, so yeah. The Suru comes in at roughly 3.5 inches folded, with a blade length of 2.3 inches, and you're looking at an overall length of 5.91 inches, so about 6 inches in length. Um, there's no denying that the Suru is a small knife, but... Um, Coming from something like the Dragonfly 2, it was surprisingly big. Um, not big, I would say, I'd just say robust and built like a tank, mostly. And despite the knife's compact size, it actually weighs more than the Sabenza 21 small I have here. So yeah, that was pretty surprising, considering that it's a lot shorter. Overall, there's a lot to like about the Suru. The build quality is clearly very good, and this is just one of those things you can tell when you have it in hand. One little thing I'm going to critique, though, is that the blade is not absolutely perfectly centered. I honestly had to look very closely to notice this, and it probably it's almost probably imperceptible on video, to be honest. Um, most people would be very hard-pressed to notice this, and it's just one of those things that I like to look out for. Maybe you can tell, but it's just off by just a smidge. Um, you can kind of tell if you look at the this here too, the flipper tab. Yeah. I would have hoped that this wouldn't have been present on an almost $250 knife, but hey, it happens. And all you need to do is look at Benchmade to know that it could have been much worse. Clearly what I'm about to say next is subjective, but I do think that this is a very aesthetically pleasing knife. Aesthetics are particularly important to me because I carry on a college campus. I really don't want to carry a knife that comes off as threatening, and the Suru fits that bill. Plus, I don't like that tactical look that a lot of other knives have. So if you're using your knife in an office or some other urban capacity, this knife might warrant some consideration. The scales are full titanium, as you can see here, and they've been bead blasted for a clean, sterile look. Admittedly, this is not my favorite finish on titanium because it tends to show scratches easier, but all things equal, this is a very popular finish nonetheless, and it'll develop character as you use the knife. I don't do shelf queens, so I'm pretty cool with it. The series hardware that you see here, the screws and the um, liner detection point, and the clip are all titanium as well, and although the lighting is kind of bad here, they have been... Um, anodized a light blue. So yeah, pretty cool, and it really pops against the bead blasted titanium. Something less noticeable that I want to point out is this ball bearing clip here. Um, it's a step up from the wire clip that's on the aluminum production models of the Suru, and this is also a feature that's generally reserved for um, custom knives, and it's definitely a nice touch. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that likes to brush their finger over it while the knife is in my pocket. So yeah, overall, I'd say that Fox Knives and Vox nailed the aesthetics part, and I really struggle to find anything to critique in this respect. Functionally speaking, the Suru is a flipper, so you flick this little tab here on the back with your index finger. You can also spidey flick it using the hole here, but I found that's pretty difficult because of the hole's shape. It's not quite like the actual spidey hole, which is a lot easier to flick and is really clean. Overall, the action of the blade is smooth and reliable. I have handled a few of my dad's flippers in the past, although none were of this quality, and I'd say that it takes a reasonably intentional amount of pressure. Um, to activate the Suru's blade. At the end of the day, my assessment might be a bit skewed here because I do think that flippers are just about the coolest mechanism you can put on a knife. Anyways, something else I'm really liking is the blade composition and the design itself. A nice little touch that you can see are the Fox Knives logo and the Vox logo, which have been laser engraved on. You also notice that the titanium model, as well as the carbon fiber iteration of this knife, I believe, use Bowler M390. This is a step up from the N690 on the aluminum versions of the knife. Um, this is a popular premium steel because it has insanely good edge retention and corrosion resistance. The drawback, of course, is that it's more difficult to sharpen. And uh, just being candid, but in practical use, most users won't see the advantage of the M390. 
it's really just nice to know that you're getting a super steal, especially because you're paying so much money for this knife. Straight out of the box, the series blade was very sharp and it had a very consistent grind. And while there's nothing really fancy about the drop point, it's just a nice simple shape um, and it works for me. Moving on, this blade spine is thick. Um, if I compare it to both the Sabenza and Dragonfly, you'll see what I'm talking about. So here's the Sabenza. Clearly the series is a lot thicker. And here is the Spyderco, even thicker. So yeah, this blade was definitely made to suck up some abuse and I appreciate that even if I'll most never likely use it in that capacity. Uh, most of my use centers around opening packages, so yeah. The spine thickness also aids in the ergonomics of this knife. It gives my thumb a nice little spot to rest on. And speaking of ergonomics, the Suru gets them right, at least for me. There's a nice choil here for your index finger to rest on, and there's an indentation near the bottom for my pinky finger, although it's a bit hard to see on camera. This is the indentation I'm talking about. This thing serves a dual purpose, actually. It acts as a resting point for your ring finger when you um, flick the knife, which is really important because you need to be able to push up on it. So yeah, both the choil and the indentation align perfectly with my hands. But if you have larger hands, um, this might not be the knife for you. And ergonomics are really, really a um, shit fest, basically, with a lot of knives. In essence, I like the design of the Suru very much. And although I neglected to mention it earlier, there's also a lanyard hole at the base of this knife. Um, although I personally won't use it myself, I don't think that it detracts from the knife's functionality or aesthetics at all. You'll notice that there's a little bit of jimping going on in it, which tracks on your palm when you actuate the knife. So that's quite important, actually. And um, this is a little detail that shows some thought that went into the design. So the sewer gets it right on the aesthetics and design. Let's go over something I'm a bit more ambivalent about. The biggest issue that I've actually had with the knife is breaking in the frame lock here. Um, it's kind of hard to picture on video because of the angles and the shadows, but yeah. Um, there's no actual lock stick because there's a steel insert that prevents it from sticking. It's just that mine came unbelievably difficult to unlock the blade and close the knife at first. Um, luckily over time the issue has abated, but um, I literally have to use the thumb strength of the gods to get the things closed the first couple days. It's still a bit difficult, and there's definitely a breaking period with this knife. And I can close it one-handed now without too much issue. But yeah, it is what it is, and I actually experienced something pretty similar with my Sabenza here. Um, with the Sabenza, you have to open it in a very specific way, like you have to push up 90 degrees underneath the stud. So yeah. All said and done, I think that this is a quality mid-tech knife. Um, the construction certainly isn't perfect, but it's good, and both the design and aesthetics are on point. This knife actually took home the Blade Show 2018 Overall Knife of the Year award, if it matters. Being honest here, I think that there were a lot of other comparable knives at the show, and it's really sort of a crapshoot for the award. But there's still no denying that it won the award, and it seems like the sprint runs have been selling very well. That aside, these are just my preliminary observations of the knife, as I've only had it for about a week. I really think that this is one of those pieces of gear that will grow on me as it breaks in, and eventually I think I'm going to disassemble it for maintenance when I get back home and have the right tools. Hopefully you guys found this review informative, if you did be sure to hit that like button and to subscribe for future videos. Thank you for watching.